Hey everybody, today I have my son Lavelle with me and we're gonna be showing you um, a video when he went to Africa back in 2020, was it? Yeah, it was 2020, right before uh, Corona the, mm -hmm. virus hit uh, the States. Um, I took a trip to Africa and uh, follow me on the journey. All right, well, he's gonna be narrating, so make sure you uh, subscribe, like, and press that notification button. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Hey guys, follow us uh, on my journey to Africa. Um, I went there to do missionary work in Tanzania. Prior to going to Tanzania, I had extra time, so I flew into Nairobi, Kenya. And as you're seeing right now, these are on the streets of Nairobi. Um, I have never seen so many people of color and black people everywhere in my life. Uh, there are people everywhere. It's, you know, the hustle and bustle of a really big city um, with not a lot of like street signs and regulations. So people kind of do drive and walk where they please and you just kind of have to figure it out. While I was there, I also visited a museum. I went to the Nairobi National Museum. Um, it's important to me to get that culture in uh, whenever I visit places. So uh, here are a few images um, and sculptures and the architecture from the visit within the museum. Uh, please enjoy these. In addition to the museum, I did go to this giraffe 
uh, center where you got to interact with the giraffes and you know uh, that was really an awesome experience to see wildlife that up close um, I also did uh, half of a day mini safari in Nairobi which was really cool seeing uh, the wild, the wildlife out there, and Rhino? This, you oh, know, some of the animals uh, oh, that are you. just in their natural habitat. I did um, do uh, another safari, and you'll see pictures from that at a later, uh, later time. That had more of the big five animals that I was looking to see, but this was still an awesome uh, experience right outside Nairobi. Spending a few days in Nairobi, it was time for me to actually go to um, the destination of where I was going to do the work in, which was in Arusha, Tanzania. And there I was teaching school aid kids English, as you can see from the picture up there. Uh, I'm talking about a poem by Langston Hughes, uh, which is one of my favorite. Um, so just a look in the classroom. And some of the boxes that the kids were all through life and have great attitudes. take life for granted you know with, and seeing kids who don't have uh, a lot three just you know looking four, at the lessons that they do have and taking them in it was really awesome five, five six seven eight nine ten what is this one Two, three. So after working with kids for about three days, the weekend was nearing and we had the time to do other interests that interest, interest us while we were in Tanzania. Um, I went on a safari to uh, the Gorongora Crater. That was one of the places that you just saw. Um, it was a magnificent view. While we were there, we also visited the Serengeti. Uh, the Serengeti being super popular for what is on National Geographic. And here's just some of the pictures from that. It was truly the circle of life. Everywhere you looked, there were animals and zebras. Zebras everywhere. Ahora se me enchumó. Y va a una semca en el camino a lo alto, y va a ser aquí en la puta, está bien. Look at the wildlife.
It's ready. That's ready. And then the guy just standing outside the door in the dad room. This moment right here on the safari was such a special moment. Uh, just seeing the king of the jungle, four you no know, lines that you can observe. There's actually a fifth one right here, all walking in unison was awesome. At the end of safari, um, we did have a couple of days to where we were. Later, later, later.
After I finished the missionary work in Tanzania, I flew to meet some of my friends in South Africa, and we flew into Cape Town. This was uh, one of the views from there. It's such a beautiful, aesthetically beautiful place. Uh, this was on a hike at Table Mountain. <laughs> is important to me to visit Robbins Island. If you're familiar, this is where he was imprisoned for the majority of his life before his presidency. And I went to um, just see how that experience, you know, was for him and try to take in, you know, as much as I can. Um, this is uh, one of the narrators. They didn't find any document. We know ourselves. Uh, was a tour guide who was actually imprisoned there at the time that Mandela was in prison, he was just speaking of his experiences there. If you know me, you know I'm obsessed with big cats. So of course I had to go to um, check out and see the big big cats. But it wasn't just enough for me to see. Son, them from what far. were you thinking? I, really to get super close I hope they already had their food. To pet them. I know people would probably never do this in their wildest dreams or life. Um, but I don't know. It's just a passion of mine, and I love them, and I felt really at home, like I was really in the motherland um, in these moments. Sure. We also flew into Johannesburg and we visited where Nelson Mandela was born. Um, his house is now turned into a museum and basically, you know, uh, it's set up for you to view. As you can see, this is the actual bed that he slept in. Um, this is in an improvised area of Johannesburg and this is us right in front of it. We also took a tour of the Soweto, which is uh, their ghetto and basically the home of Mandela and just saw some of the conditions as you can see this is where they get their water supply. I was trying to be in like this food is from the home because people actually live like this. But um, it was just um, interesting to see how people are living and uh, these are some of the conditions that people still are, are facing right now who live in the Soweto. Thank you for following me on my journey. I hope it was um, a visually a great experience for you as it was for me actually being there in the moment. And hopefully um, this excites something into you to want to travel and to journey yourself to the motherland. I'd highly recommend this to anyone. Thank you.